Welcome to Rugby Thoughts by Driving More and this episode I'm going to talk about the Super Rugby format. There has been a lot of discussion about how it's lopsided and unfair. A lot of that has come from New Zealand and so the uh, the New Zealand side's not getting home quarterfinals. There's been a bit out of Australia because they feel that they've been paying the uh, hardest teams and had a harder schedule. But in the long run, that's got to be good for you, so they shouldn't. Uh, and um, on the flip side, you know, the Storm is complaining they haven't played any New Zealand sides, so they had easy games. Now, considering that they lost to the, both the Sharks and the Lions, um, I think that would have just led to more losses and a, and a poor record. But um, it was interesting hearing on the Scrum, SPN Scrum 5 podcast that um, the South African franchises need the games against the uh, New Zealand sides to get good gates and for financial reasons. So maybe that's part of it, not just purely the, the, the playing thing. Either way, there's a lot of talk about it being un, un, lopsided and unfair. Um, at the end of the day, the top eight teams on points are the top eight teams in, that have made the playoffs. So it's not a total disaster. Um, we've got the right teams there, uh, to be honest. Now, whether they've got the home advantage and the travels, maybe that's a little bit unfair, but we... Um, uh, we need to play to the uh, audiences, and, and it's an it's an internet it's a competition across various countries, and you can't exclude or have all the games in one place. So uh, I don't think it's bad having uh, games guaranteed to various places. Um, there's a lot of people harking on back to saying that the best way is the Super Ten or Super Twelves, and I think there is a bit of also rose tinted glasses saying how things were always good in the old days. If you had that few teams. Would you be able to keep hold of your players? Would you have the finances you need? Um, those I'm not so sure. So you've got to realise that we that it is going to expand. Super Rugby have admitted that there hasn't been a plan about how they expand, just that they are expanding, um, which is why we've ended up in what is basically a hybrid solution um, that does uh, feel a bit strange um, and, and not sit very well. Personally, I think the what they should have done, rather than having this split of sort of five teams from Australasia and three from South Africa into the quarterfinals, I think they should have split split it down properly, um, like they do in the USA. I mean, let's be honest, this structure is but it has been mirrored on the USA model, um, and the way they do it is you'll have a for an NFC East and NFC West, um, and they will play up against each other, and you have a champion of each side, and they will they will play in the final. So I think what they should have done is split it into African conferences um, playing themselves in the quarterfinals and semi-finals producing one champion what well, one champion contender and then the Australian New Zealand conferences putting together four teams uh, that played in the quarterfinals and uh, semi-final to provide uh, one final contender as well okay that would have meant that the Crusaders would probably have missed I think it's the Crusaders would have missed out and the um, the Bulls would have been in the um, the playoffs instead, but um, that's just the way of it. Um, the uh, I think it would be much clearer, and people would have understood it much more that way, and we wouldn't have as much of the uh, um, moaning. The real problem, though, hasn't been so much about the structure. Uh, at the end of the day, what it's been about is the teams that have performed poorly and have been automatic wins uh, for the good sides. If we look at the bottom sides. Um, which basically essentially is the we're looking at the Jaguars, uh, um, Sunwolves, Kings, Cheetahs, um, Force, and the Reds. Uh, I think it's only um, uh, there's only been like two or three games that they've won against the top teams, and one of those this, the Lions sent a B team out to to to, um, to Argentina. So um, they 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 really have been too up too easy to call. Um, and what really needs to work there, I think, for the Jaguars, you can see how they're going to improve. The expectations were too high first up. They just didn't have the institutional knowledge of how to travel, rest, and train. Um, and they played a long game, um, rotating quite a lot of um, players to create depth and be ready for the rugby championship. So with the Jaguars, we can see where they're going, and we can see they're going to improve. With the others, um, there are we really need to sort out the administration side of things first, and then get things working off the pitch, then things on the pitch can work. If you look at the Kings, they're losing a lot of players, 
um, and if you think that a couple of months ago they didn't even know if they were going to get paid, you can understand why they're going to play elsewhere, um, be it overseas or in South Africa. Um, the Cheetahs, yet again, are losing players to the Bulls, their best players, so how can they ever build? Um, with Japan, uh, they didn't get together until two weeks before the tournament. Um, there was no way they were going to ever be able to catch up um, having such little preparation time. So hopefully next year um, they will um, have uh, structure in place. But the administrators there clearly didn't understand what they were taking on and didn't get it and, and didn't organise themselves. So um, I've covered that before uh, in, in previous posts that I think they need to work closer with the companies um, who are essentially the, the, the professional teams out there um, and uh, rather than against them. Over in the uh, over in Australia, I mean, the force have had to be taken over by the IU and have had to, so they've sacked the manager. Um, the Reds have sacked the manager and had to get a new CEO. I think the Tars are getting a new CEO. The Brumbies had a big um, boardroom fallout um, and had to get a CEO and, and have got a new CEO as well. So there's clearly things aren't all well there, and there are also been rumours in uh, from Melbourne. Uh, they're struggling financially as well. So what really needs to happen is, I think, they, 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 if we're going to have a comp competition on the pitch, we need the proper structures off the pitch so that the players are secure, they know why they're there, uh, they know they're going to get paid, um, and they can see their futures. So I think, to me, that's the that, that, that's the main thing. However, at least Samsar um, have admitted that there is no, there is no plan, um, and they've just expanded because they, for, for expansion's sake. And they have commissioned a plan, and I think it's coming about September, October time. Uh, it's supposed to report, um, and they have agreed that um, they will review and maybe make changes in 2018. So we've got the current we've got the current structure at least next year, um, but it was supposed to run through until after the World Cup. They, they, they've agreed to they, they've or said they're going to review that um, two years early. So that's good. Personally, I think that Pan is going to come back and suggest expansion again um, in Asia and the Americas at least. Uh, and maybe even Africa as well. Um, I can see that Japan um, has got, uh, could, has, the long goal has got to be for an Asian conference. Um, they're already hosting a whole bunch of games in Singapore, so clearly they're looking for it to put a team there. Uh, the Hong Kong national team has gone fully time professional, so you can imagine they would be looking at having a side as well. Um, Japan um, has got has clearly um, got the capacity for more than one team um, once they get their act together. <clears throat> Um, and South Korea has been challenging, and they're also looking at playing, obviously playing these games in Fiji. So the potential are they looking at putting a team there as well. So you could easily have a team, easily have a conference of four or five teams uh, in Asia. Over in the Americas, um, Argentina clearly can support another team. Uh, then you've got um, the USA and Canada, uh, both could support at least one team, um, and potentially more. Looking forwards, uh, you've also got to play. Um, Chile and Brazil, who have been taking part in the America's Rugby Championship, and another team, because it's six, isn't it? And I've gone and forgotten who the other team is now. No, Uruguay, obviously. So there's clearly, again, um, at least four, with a second team in Argentina, and one in the USA, one in the Canada, um, and potentially more uh, for a conference there. Um, in Africa, well, um, Namibia have joined the Curry Cup, so... Um, could they grow into a national? Could they grow as a Super Rugby team? Um, and uh, you've also got Kenya, obviously, who are doing well in the sevens. Uh, could they also potentially support another team? I don't know, but I, I can see definitely see expansion um, being suggested in those kind of areas. So those are my thoughts. Uh, any comments? Um, please leave them below. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, or or drop me a line on Twitter at Driving More. Um, don't forget to also subscribe to my newsletter to get all my uh, videos and uh, predictions and written articles as well. And um, look forward to talking to you in the next Rugby Thoughts.